morning guys my name is crystal welcome to my youtube channel welcome all subscribers welcome new if you like my videos please press the like button and please do subscribe we are now on wednesday the middle of the week alexa good morning good morning and happy international women's day why not ask me who's today's inspiring woman Who's Alexa? Who's today's inspiring woman? Here is your inspiring woman for March 8th, Jennifer Doudner. Jennifer Ann Doudner is an American biochemist who has done pioneering work in CRISPR gene editing and made other fundamental contributions in biochemistry and genetics. She received the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry with Emmanuel Charpentier for the development of a method for genome editing. She is the Lee Ka Shing Chancellor's Chair Professor in the Department of Chemistry in the Department of Molecular and Cell Biology at the University of California, Berkeley. She has been an investigator with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute since 1997. Okay, Alexa, whose birthday is it today? Today's famous birthdays include Syrian-born refugee who was an Olympic swimmer Yusra Radini. British actress Anna Maidley, musician Tony Campos, Russian-American comedian, YouTuber and prankster Vitaly Storovetsky, and Indian Bollywood actor Fadim Khan. Right guys, so I'm at my flat at Rochester, and it seems that we have some, have had some rainy snow. I call it rainy snow, because we've had some snow, but we've had rain as well, so it's washed most of the snow away but it was really freezing cold overnight freezing and um, it did say on the weather that we was going to have some snow this week alexa what's the date today today is wednesday the 8th of march alexa what's the weather like currently in rochester it's one degree celsius with flurries today you can expect snowy rainy weather, with a high of 3 degrees and a low of 1 degree. By the way, there's a yellow warning for snow in effect until Thursday 9th of March, 9am. Alexa, what's the time? Alexa, what's the time? The time is 9am. And Alexa, can you tell me a joke? I should really tell a boxing joke, but I can't think of a punchline. Very funny. Right, I'm just going to take you outside to show you that the, um, the lift is now working, which is fantastic. Oh. Especially when people have got to lift things and somebody's disabled, so it's, it's, it's working, so that's cool. Let's go out. fantastic and just to show you that side that on some of the cars there is snow at the back of the building Biggest train to St Pancras, London. Is it good? No snow on that car. We've had a little bit of snow. People 
scraping the snow off their cars with their hoodies on. photographs of the lovely crane with the blue light in it. Um, it see, looks really pretty lit up at night. And I mean, this place is probably wonderful if you've got all your family down here and you've got a partner and you're walking up and together. It's gorgeous. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice at night when I'm on my own walking the dog and there I'm snapping a few uh, nighttime photographs. It can be really, really pretty and nice if you look in the right places. Right, so I took Max out for a walk, um, just a few people about, not too many, just walked around the field in the roundabout, and I came back and brought him back. Uh, came back indoors, and um, I just watched the TV, I put the box on, watched watch, watch the television, uh, whatever's on there. Um, so I watched A&E again last night, 2014. Um, a young lady that was, she was, she came out as gay to her mum, she lived in London, she had an uh, abscess on her bottom, this large um, gay woman had an abscess on her bottom and she was in, in the hospital with her female partner and um, there was a guy that had had a, a, a crashed his Land Rover and he was cut to pieces and his dad came to see him in the hospital because his mother had died so he, uh, his dad came miles to see his son who'd had a nasty crash in a Land Rover remember this is now, now nearly 10 years old well I'm watching on the telly it's nearly 10 years old some of the medical practices are outdated or they've got, um, they've, technology's gone further. And these people are, are almost 10 years older. They probably look completely different now. So a lot of stuff on telly is repeats, old repeats. They aren't the people as they are now. And you probably wouldn't recognise them. It's like I told you the other day, I, I, watch, I was watching George Michael outed and I hadn't seen Holly Johnson from Frankie Goes to Hollywood for years. Because you, 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 you get what you see on telly, you see. It's like we're all kept in bubbles ourselves and we, we don't see the real person. We don't know the real person, we only see these personalities on telly. We don't know them, we don't know what they're really like and we don't know what they look like face to face. It might be totally different and it probably is. So I took Max out, watched TV, messed around on my, with my phone with games and I just try to relax and um, go to bed. Unfortunately, I am going through the menopause, or the change as some people call it, and um, last night, um, even though it was really, really freezing, I couldn't sleep. I was tossing and turning, I was coming out in hot sweats, and I can well, it's horrible. You feel it creeping over your body. You'll be completely normal, body temperature fine, and then all of a sudden, it, it's like someone's turned, you, you feel like a radiator. Someone switched you on and you get overheated from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head. And I've got no choice to, but, but even when it's snowing, to open all the windows and everything and put cold air fans on. And you never know when one's going to happen. I've had three or four happening shops. I was in a charity shop looking at something a couple of months ago and, and I just had to run out of there because you know it's like clothes when you clothes are warm aren't they so I just had to get out of the shop it is affecting me going outside and doing normal day-to-day -day activities because it is 
now cold, it snowed, and I'm putting a, a jumper on because I don't want to actually freeze, if you know what I mean, because I can't feel the cold, and I can't feel the cold. I feel hot most of the time, boiling. Last night I was up and down three or four times. I mean, to me, my body feels like it's summer. And then you strip off, you open the windows and the doors, and then when the hot flush is finished, you're freezing. And it's like being a yo-yo. So you put all the clothes back on, and then 10 minutes later, you get another one. So you're off with your jumper, it's freezing cold, it's the middle of winter, and then you get hot again. It's hot and then you get cold and it's hot and cold and hot and cold. Now this is what I wanted to talk to the doctor about on the phone yesterday. But they, they don't listen, they don't read and now I've got to wait probably another month to get seen. They don't, they don't listen. I spent 10 minutes filling in an e-consultation form about my menopause problems. And I get someone ring me round my mum's when I'm round my mum's. I waited all day. I get a call at four o'clock telling me it's a medication review. Oh, you're bound to feel depressed. You're going through the change. And I said, well, this is what I called the, the doctors up to get a, 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 a doctor to talk to me about it. Oh, no, this is a medication review. Oh, wow. And I took it in my mum's garden. I didn't take it at the Corey's Road. I didn't. I took the call round my mum's. They rang me when I was round my mother's. It's a good job. Well, I wasn't in the taxi, wasn't it? <laughs> what ma What made me laugh was I. I had a message to keep my phone on at all times. You must keep your phone on at all times to take this important call. And it was a medication review. I mean, really. Um, three minutes. Do you think someone can review somebody's medication in three minutes? Can you decide whether someone's severely depressed or not in three minutes? Not even ten minute consultation. Three minutes. It recorded it on my phone. Three minutes. To, to discuss citalopram, omisoprol, tizofen and um, allergies. Three minutes. There's no care in this world. This is why it's all fucked up. Um, it's just disgusted. I said, my mum. My mum said, what's wrong? I said, I've waited all day to take a call from a doctor. And they've given me a medication review. And she said, don't worry, Ness. That, that this, 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 everybody gets treated the same. I said, I don't dispute the fact. I said, it's still disgusting. She said, everyone's getting treated like it. And I, 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 I think they are. And she didn't sound like a doctor to me. She sounded like a 20-year-old a, a, a like student. She didn't sound like a doctor at all. They never do. My doctors never do sound like doctors. And when you ring up the receptionist, you, you get talked to like you're a pile of poop. That one. We ain't got nothing. <laughs> yes, they've, they've given me a doctor's appointment for a month's time, but it's at St Mary's Island, Edgeway which is a lovely, beautiful place to go shopping, isn't it? If you've got money. But why would I want to go all the way up there when I can't drive? When there's a suitable doctor's practice, 20 minutes down the road in Strood, there's the Pentagon Centre, Chatham, and there's also the halfway surgery in New Road, where Dr Ali used to work at. Dr Ali, the one that got struck off for touching women. So um, I'm just saying, why give me a, a, an appointment?
Testament that's two bus journeys away for 8.30 in the morning. I mean, it's ridiculous. So I, I, I've messaged them. I, I said, you can't expect me to get up to St Mary's Island surgery with no transport for 8.30 in the morning when I live in Rochester. Alexa, how many miles is Rochester away from St Mary's Island, Edgeway, Chatham? From St Mary's Island, Edgeway, Chatham. Rochester is 174.7 kilometres away by car. By car. Alexa, how far is St Mary's Edgeway Chatham from Rochester on foot? 6872 The Pentagon in Chatham is 3.6 kilometres away by car. See, everything's by car, isn't it? Alexa, how long does it take to get to... St Mary's Island, Edgeway, from Chatham, by foot. Have to think about that. Sorry, I couldn't find a route between your locations. Anyway, I've got a choice. Get a taxi, which is going to cost me about 40 quid both ways. 40 quid. I've got a choice of that. Get a bus. But at that time in the morning, I probably won't be able to get a bus from Rochester. There's no train. So, I mean, it's ridiculous. So, I've messaged them and said, can you give me an appointment at, at a, a nearest doctor's surgery? I think they give people that one because that's the only one that's got, got, got um, doctors free. It's miles away. So I got up this morning, fed my cats, fed my lovely chihuahua. Um, again, I've checked the electricity meter. It's now down to £15. So I've topped it up. And again, it's not gone on to the meter. It's not gone on. There's some fault. I top up the electric meter by internet and it doesn't go on. So I've got to manually insert the number otherwise I'll lose my money and so you have to stand in the meter box for about 10 minutes typing in this long winded number to get your electric on because apparently the smart card that I ordered uh, that I ordered last Tuesday hasn't come yet because I've lost my smart card so I've got, I, I went through all this in Gloucestershire when, they, 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 when I was in a woman's refuge. Keep going out with a plastic card with this long number on it to the post office because the meters didn't work properly. Oh, do you know all these women's refuges, the follow-on accommodations, they all had smart meters, they all had keys. And you're a poor battered woman, right? You want to stay indoors and keep warm. And you have to keep bloody going out to top up a metre. And not only that, don't forget how I was treated when I was pregnant in a woman's refuge. You've got to go and queue up to sort the rent out. And then they said they was going to get someone to go with me to help me and they left me by myself. Six months pregnant just over, waiting at Herbert Warehouse the docks for an hour because the women's refuge were on my back for the rent. The rent! Like whipping my ass. You've got to stand in the queue and you've got to wait. Be patient. You're £600 overdrawn. I said I only moved in here a couple of days ago. I only moved in there about three days ago. I'm sorry, but you've got to sort the rent out. It's nearly £600 overdue. And um, some, one, one lady said to me, would you like someone to go with you? I said, yes, please. When I got up the next morning, I'm sorry there's no one available. So I had to find the place by myself, go by myself. This is why I am by myself. Because that's how I've been treated. Right guys, I'm 
guys, so the cleaner's about to come and clean the building. Um, I have been in some dire, disgusting, deteriorating accommodation with private landlords and with domestic refuge accommodation. And when you're in domestic refuge accommodation, you need to feel safe and you don't need to worry about buildings falling apart or your safety with other members of the refuge. Um, these places I don't think are vetted. Even people that are in women's refuges can be violent and dangerous and are using it as a place to hide. I came across some, some violent women, a lot of drug use, and it was a scary time for me living in a women's refuge. I was pregnant, I didn't have my other children with me, and I spent 99.9% of that time scared out my mind, worried. The place was absolutely dilapidated and falling apart. And, you know, I was treated like I was in, a, in some sort of concentration camp. I, I was just shouted at and, and, and treated like shit. Right? And these places are for women to, to escape from domestic violence, of being battered, and they want a place of safety, a place where they can rest, help and encouragement, not to be shouted at and treated like dirt and worrying about a hoover. See you later.